Hello, this is Captain Chaudhary. Uh, I was doing the basic stability calculations for uh, phase one level, phase one mates level, whereby I was doing this topic of grounding, whereby uh, initially I did flatbed grounding, sloping beach, and now the pinnacle grounding. We did one question on pinnacle grounding in my last video, and that was to find out, like in case I know that this is the tidal variation. Now this is very important. If this is the tidal variation and my vessel is at ground, what kind of thrust uh, will be caused on the ship? You know, that's a very important uh, calculation which a mariner must know. Because often we see that the vessel get uh, uh, grounded and then uh, next day we hear that the ship is broken in two parts. So that shouldn't happen. Like uh, if possible some uh, precautionary measures or you know uh, some measures can be taken so that the vessel uh, does not break into two. Now here is another situation like initially a vessel that was free floating the drafts are known and subsequently you know she gets grounded on a pinnacle and after a certain fall of tide at low water it was realized that the drafts have changed dramatically. I want to know what is the upthrust that is caused on the ship? I know the initial draft, I know the final draft. At the same time, I also want to know where is the position of pinnacle precisely where the vessel is grounded. So let us do this calculation. Uh, the data is length of the vessel 150 meters, LCF 69, TPC 24, MCTC 260. Initial free floating drafts are 8 meters forward 9.0, 4 meters aft. She is lightly at ground on a pinnacle. After a fall of tide, a certain fall of tide, the drafts have become forward 6.68 and aft 9.41. What you are required to find out is the upthrust that is caused on the ship, the point of the rock and the rise of tide that is required that the ship would refloat again. So uh, this is also practically a very important situation which a mariner must know. First of all, let me remind you that in any trim based question or a grounding question, we must use the formula of TPC, we must use the formula of MCTC. Right? So how do we use the formula of TPC now? Let us uh, say that we know the initial hydrostatic draft, we know the final hydrostatic draft. The golden rule is change of hydrostatic draft. N200 TPC is the cargo that is discharged or the thrust that is caused. So let us find out the initial hydrostatic draft. That would be aft draft 9.04 minus the trim 1.04 into LCF divided by 150 and the final hydrostatic draft would be half draft 9.41 minus trim that is 2.73 I suppose into 69 upon 150. So uh, let's find out the initial and final hydrostatic draft 1.04 into 69 equals divide by 150 equals minus 9.04 gives me 8.562 8.562 meters and let's find out the final hydrostatic draft 2.73 into 69 equal to divide by equal to 1.2558 minus 9.41 gives me 8.154 8.154 change of hydrostatic draft is uh, initial draft initial hydrostatic draft minus final so that is 0 0.408 0 0.408 multiplied by 100 tpc that is 2400 gives me me 979.2 979.8. So this is the upthrust that is caused on the ship's hull at the pinnacle point. Now next we want to find out is where is the position of the rock. Now if we look at the trim 
initial trim that is T1 was 1.04 meters and the final trim that is T2 was 2.73 meters by hour. So that means the aft trim has increased. Aft trim, why should the aft trim be increased? Why should the aft trim increase? Aft trim would increase because there is something we have discharged and unloaded from forward or there is a pinnacle forward. So this is for sure that the rock position is forward of center of rotation. Let us find out how much forward of center of rotation is the rock. Now, uh, uh, by the virtue of this rock being forward of center of rotation by the distance RF, the trim change is caused. And what is the trim change? Trim change is 1.69 meters half waves, right? So, uh, can we say that up thrust? into uh, up thrust we know 979.2 into RF is equal to trim change into 100 MCTC because the up thrust multiplied by the distance from center of rotation is going to create the trimming moment and this trimming moment is nothing but trim change into 100 MCTC. So with this we can find out what is the value of RF. So RF is going to be trim change that is 1.69 into 100 into MCTC divided by P that is 979.2. So uh, 1.69 into 26000 equals divided by 979.2. So the position of the rock is 44.87 meters forward of the center of rotation. So we have found out the up thrust 979.2. We have found out the position of rock that is 44.87 meters forward of center of rotation. Now we want to find out what is the rise of tide that is needed so that the ship floats again. Well, rise of tide should be equal to fall of tide that caused this situation. This situation was caused because of fall of tide. Now, if the same amount of tide rises, the ship will free float, which means that we have to use the same principle that the change of draft at point of contact is equal to rise or fall of tide. And change of draft at point of contact is because of two reasons. One is bodily rise and other one is change of draft purely due to change of trend. So we use the same formula that is uh, change of draft at point of contact is equal to rise or fall of tide and that is because of two reasons. One is P into 100 TPC, right? P upon 100 TPC plus P into RF square upon 100 MCTC LPP, which we used in my last video, we used this formula, P into RF square upon 100 MCTC LPP. So uh, this part is change of draft at rock purely because of change of trim and this part is change of draft because of bodily rise. So we just put the values that is 979.2 divided by 100 into 24 plus 979.2 into 44.87 square divided by 100 into 260 250. So uh, 979.2 divided by 2400 gives me 0.408. Now 979.2 into 44.87 into 44.87 equals divided by 
equal to divide by 150 it gives me 0 0.505 505 so the total is 0 0.913 meters that is 91.3 centimeters so if uh, if we uh, look at the tides and uh, we uh, find that after so many hours there's going to be a tidal rise equal to 91.3 centimeters this will refloat the vessel so necessary preparations can be done because we must always remember that the tidal force is the most powerful tool we have for refloating the vessel